Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1094, June 9th, 2023. We hit 96 degrees on this day just two years ago, mm. 2021, and 39 degrees on this day in 1915. Uh, if you need a, a good beach to go swimming on, make sure it's been kept free of weeds and algae and crud by Aquaside, a White Bear Lake company whose products have been keeping Lakeshore is looking great for more than 60 years, keeping those kids happy with a complete line of lake and pond control products. They're easy to use. They work quickly. They're registered with the EPA and DNR, and they're really, really completely safe. I've used them. I've watched them work. You don't, let, let, you don't need to let weeds overtake your lake or pond this summer. Call Aquaside. Tell them what you're looking at. They'll help you identify your weed problem, get you the right products, and your place is going to look great all summer long. And it's going to be a long, hot summer. Yes, it is. Might as well make that swimming area as clean as possible. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake... It's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Height in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Hi. Yesterday, we discussed a young fellow at Chaska High School who has a grievance. He doesn't want to see graduations held in a church. And he singled out Grace Church in Eden Prairie, which is a looks like a magnificent structure. Very nice facility. With a seven thousand seat capacity. Ooh. And I gotta and he's uh this young fellow uh He's he's all uh, got his uh, he's all uptight about that. He doesn't want it and he's gathering petitions and I gather he'll win. Because no one in the schools or no one in the failed academy uh, has the ability to say, go bleep yourself. They just can't do it. They will cave. Either can't or they won't. And I got a note from Darren who writes, my family has been attending Grace Church for six years. A couple of answers to your questions. There are no fixed religious symbols in the lobby or auditorium. There is a big cross in the auditorium, but it can be wheeled on and off the stage. The lobby and backstage area is the same. Any banners, symbols, Christmas, Easter stuff can be easily taken down and placed in storage. You can make it look just like the Minneapolis Convention Center. There is a cross on top of the building that cannot be taken down. They are in the non-denominational zone. Pastor Troy's statement is very accurate and preach weekly. Chris... Reavers, parking is not that bad. It takes about five to ten minutes to get out on a normal Sunday. Kenny, no kiss shirts. At least, <laughs> at least Led Zeppelin or better. But boom, boom, boom. Peace out, boys. Darren S. I should have clarified. Darren's right. The parking's not the problem. It's getting out of the lot. Once. Well, that's you know. But you know, it's going to happen when you got seven thousand people. A lot, 7, of, people want people. To, uh, a lot of, you know, you get your worship. And I forgot to mention this yesterday, but I know every year Tony Dungy hosts an event at that facility. Yeah. I don't remember what time of the year, but I know he has a big, uh, not a fundraiser, but he has a big event at that church every year. He well, didn't, Darren didn't address my kneelers. Did you bring up kneelers? Yeah. They probably got kneelers. Yeah, I, I bet they don't. No, I don't think they do. And we also have been talking about the. Uh, Sinkholes apparently are caused by climate change, right. which is preposterous. But Tom from St. Paul writes, on Wednesday's podcast, you discussed a story about a sinkhole impacting a local city street. Experts weighed in on every aspect of the sinkhole except for its actual resolution. This reminded me of a situation at work a few years ago. I walked into the kitchen and found several employees standing in a circle looking at the floor. As I approached, I saw there was a small puddle of water, perhaps eight inches across, where an employee had either spilled water or dropped ice. The employees gathered, discussed whose responsibility the spill was. Facilities? Custodial? Is there an online form? A phone, a phone number? Without a word, I walked to the paper towel dispenser, grabbed a stack of them, and walked back to the spill. Without a word, I wiped up the water, making it a point to make eye contact with each and every member of the puddle committee. 
as I did so. Problem solved. Note that this was before climate change hysteria infiltrated every aspect of our culture. But I have no doubt that if it were to happen today, the melted ice would be blamed on consumption of fossil fuels. This is just more proof in my mind that we have become so educated we are complete idiots. <laughs> Good luck, okay. Tom, from St. Paul. Thank you. I the puddle community. It. I love that. The puddle uh, community. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, committee. I'm sorry. Yeah. Committee. Yeah. Now, this, uh, Kenny and I, uh, although Kenny likes to distance himself from me because he thinks I might be too naive, uh, <laughs> which I am, I, uh, but I, I, I have predicted at the beginning of this Garage Logic year, I predicted that 2023, this would be the year we learn more about UFOs. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, we have too many credible people involved and reporting them as opposed to drunk fishermen in Pascagoula, <laughs> Mississippi. And this this is making uh, quite the stir now in the Las Vegas area if, in fact, it has not gone viral. And this is the story, uh, maybe you've heard of it, of a UFO, uh, an, a, a machine that landed... In a yard. Crashed. In a, a, it crashed in a yard in a resid- residential area, and the homeowners saw creatures. Okay. Ooh, that and would he, freak me out. And Including police dash cam video. Yeah, yeah. And here is, I suppose, their local, what, Channel 5? This is 5 the or, Channel 8 CBS we, affiliate called 8 News Now. Well, here's, <laughs> here's 8 News Now, their local 10 o'clock news at night in Vegas. Here's their piece on that. Southern Nevada is abuzz tonight with stories about the crash of an unknown object and the alleged sighting of strange creatures in the backyard of a Northwest Valley home. So it was last night that 8 News Now investigator David Charns reported about how Metro Police responded back on May 1st after receiving a strange call from a very frightened family. Well, our report generated a global response and now piecing together the sequence of events has been kind of tricky in part because the primary witnesses have been almost as elusive as the beings they say they encountered. <laughs> Chief Investigator George Knapp is as perplexed George as the rest Knapp, of us, Brooke. George. I mean, as you know, me. this is not our first UFO rodeo. We first heard about the incident in early May via the Metro Police grapevine. The incident has a lot in common with other bizarre cases from around the world, an alleged crash, strange beings, and bits and pieces that don't make sense. But the police took this seriously, and so do we. Just before midnight on April 30th, sky watchers across several western states saw a bright fireball streak through the heavens. A police officer working in the Northwest Valley caught a glimpse of the colorful object on his body cam. At nearly the same time, a ring camera in the area recorded a strange noise and what sounds like a crash. One family living in a ranch-style home had a much closer view of the object. Two brothers and their father were working on a vehicle in their yard when they caught a glimpse of a sparkly object as it came crashing down, then were hit by what they describe as a shock wave. One of the witnesses, a young man named Angel, has stated when the brothers looked into the yard where the object landed, that spot was obscured and blurry, as if by unknown form of camouflage. What they saw next prompted a frantic call to 911. So there's two people or two subjects that are in your backyard? Correct, and they're very large. They're like okay. eight foot, nine feet, ten foot, I don't know. They're, they, look like, they look like aliens to us. Can you hold, please? Yeah. Big yes. eyes, they have big eyes, okay. like, like I can't explain it. And big mouth. <laughs> they're shiny eyes, and, and they're not human. They're 100% they're not human. 8 News Now investigators have spoken with family members multiple times in the past four weeks, but each of the three times we accepted their invitation to do an interview, they didn't answer the door or their phone. (laughs) These are some of the claims they've made in other public forums. Multiple family members backed up the story in an initial police report we obtained. Angel says they heard the patter of multiple feet in the yard. They later heard footsteps on their roof. They saw one of the eight-foot-tall creatures climb behind the controls of a large front loader stored in the yard as if trying to engage it. 
He got a good look at one of the creatures, he said, a greenish grayish being with large eyes and long legs. He says he could hear its deep breaths. And when he locked eyes, he was in essence frozen in place, couldn't move. In the middle of the yard where the object had crashed, then vanished, a circular impression was left in the soil. Okay, where is this on your property? Metro sources say the police dispatcher initially wondered whether to send a crisis intervention team to help the troubled witness, but then took the incident seriously. Two officers arrived 38 minutes after the call, and by then had heard from other officers. They proceeded cautiously and managed some nervous laughs. I ain't dealing with that. <laughs> a few days later, the family says, two Metro sergeants returned to the scene to ask follow-up questions. The family says they also saw men in suits and sunglasses driving in a car with government plates cruising slowly past the house See? in the following days. Nellis and Creech have denied any interest or involvement with the incident. Metro has indicated they wow. believe the family that something crashed in their yard. But what? Someone else has access to it. Now you mentioned, George, in that piece that, you know, they were frozen because so many people have been critical of, like, why didn't get their phone out? Why didn't they shoot the video? Do we know if there's even any video of this incident? Uh, uh, yes and no. So there's a surveillance camera in the backyard. The property owner keeps that because he's like got a lot of expensive equipment there. What we were told is that at the moment this thing comes down and crash, this camera went out, and it was out mm. for a couple of minutes. When it came back on, course, the sure. object was gone, but the circle was there. We've been told by Angel in multiple phone conversations that he shot video of ah. the creatures we haven't seen it and we don't know anybody else who's seen it yet so maybe he'll release it at some point it's getting a lot of attention yeah, oh yeah, all over <laughs> all yeah. right george thanks right. for that thank you hey. george is mm. the guy that was duped by bob lazar right george yeah Knapp. yeah I, I have some questions here we yeah. go yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> first of all uh, you got dad and the two brothers yep they're working on a car in the yard. Yeah, that's right. At, night. Do it. at, at, at night. midnight. Yep, yep. At midnight. Of course, it's midnight. And apparently, in the yard, Dad's got a lot of. I mean, is there a stove in well, the yard? Well, when you an old see toilet? the news clip, uh, and I'll post this so people can see it for them for themselves. Old no, but they have a large a yard in the back that has a caterpillar. They've so got a maybe bunch he's of in equipment. The, he was in that kind of equipment. I, I have another question. Uh, uh, it was blurry. Right. Yeah. Why, why does everything have to be blurry? The obligatory blurry. It's the obligatory focus, blurry. But yeah. I'm not dismissing the fact. Out of focus UFO. The camera was, just so <laughs> happens to go out right before the crash. That's how they disguise themselves. See? Like, yeah. Come mm -hmm. on. Angel. Angel. The guy's angel. name is Angel. Guy, well, I got that on my list. He okay, got good. a guy called Angel. You know, uh, hey, Jimmy. Right. Jimmy, yeah. And, and, Jimmy, that's what I saw. I, I got, got him 10% out of 50% of nothing. I got an eight foot out of focus monster in my backyard, Jimmy. So and then you got this uh, the, the creature. Yep. You know, as blurry as it was, mm -hmm. he gets on the front end loader, and you're telling me, you mean to tell me, that given this supposed otherworldly advanced technology, <laughs> this idiot couldn't figure out how to work well, a front end load. Number one, you got to put the safety lever down, <laughs> and, and then you have to put your foot on the brake, yep, yep. and then you've got to. But he's uh, a, he's advanced. You got to turn the glow plug on for a few seconds. Yeah. This is an advanced guy. I would dismiss I, it. Nine feet tall, with, and he's green. Except for the fact that the, <laughs> one of the videos you do see, the large, blurry uh, crash landing, right. that's a police dash cam video. Yeah, but that, that could have been somebody's a comet, phone. for God's sakes. That could have been a shooting star. Mm -hmm. I heard the ring camera. Well, could you go back to the crash sound? Oh, because yeah. if you listened uh, to the crash sound... You can hear a huge you hear something. boom. Yes. You know, you almost hear yeah, the old the movie airplane. We recorded a strange a noise and what sounds like a crash. You hear the one family? Yeah, sounds do like it yeah. again. Do it again. Street through the heavens. A police officer working on his body cam. At nearly the same time, a ring camera in the area recorded a strange noise and what sounds like a crash. One uh -huh. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like coyote falling off a wily e. coyote falling <laughs> off a cliff and hitting the desert. Yeah, oh, remember the Acme Sea? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Who did we have? Was it the cat that uh, that uh, yelled t to the point where it conked itself out? We had a yeah. no, yeah. no, yeah. It was, no. It was a rooster. Oh, it was a rooster. A rooster. It was a rooster who uh, crowed. To the point where he knocked himself out. Passed out. He yeah. passed out. No, you don't have to find that. No, I got to find it. No, but, no, song, but let's but... stay with this for a moment. Focus. Okay. You do hear something going through the air. 
Right. Mm-hmm. Like George Jetson. Boom. You do hear the woo part. Like a bag of rocks that they smacked on the table. But then I have another question about the yard. Yeah. There was no grass. It was just like a sand yard. Like well, in the old yeah, days of golf, you had the sand yeah, green. Nah, they don't try in Vegas. There's no yard. Yeah, I guess not. Just, you yeah. can't. It's too hot. Yeah. 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 They don't really? water. Because there was no yard. Mm. Yeah. And uh, But I, I've i always been uh, of... The, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Civil defense siren. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine having that as your ringtone? Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> okay, so so this thing here here's another problem I have. I put this on my list. I I am I have been given to believe that if there are beings, they're highly advanced. Right. Well, A, then why did these morons crash? B, why couldn't he start a simple, measly little front end loader? <laughs> right. And then if he did, if he could what do was that. he going to do with it? He's going to get some, he's going to dig up the sand so he can make some back. He's going to make a slow getaway on that caterpillar. Yeah. B, yeah. we got a nine foot blurry creature going down Magnolia Lane <laughs> on a front end loader. It sounds like everything they claimed could be. Um, Prove it somehow. It. I just love it. <laughs> My favorite part is the ghosting part. Yeah. How they uh, agree to an interview, and then They're when a the guy gone. shows up, he They're pulls gone. a candy. <laughs> they completely did Standing that. there peeking through the shades. Kenny, don't you think <laughs> they gone? did that because of safety? Look, I don't want to be outed. They're going to come back for me if I go on the news. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, I don't know. No. Angel, Angel, Angel insisted. Aliens? Angel insisted they were 100% not human. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And 100%. A big mouth. And a big mouth. Big mouth, big eyes, green. Large out of focus. But it was blurry. <laughs> Everything was blurry. Oh, now, were the beings blurry or just their machine? Their vehicle. They had shiny it, eyes. They had shiny eyes. Yes. Oh, I just love that. I, I just, we have a, we, it's a great country. When I, I love, love no, go ahead, Kenny. I love the audible patter of multiple feet yeah. and later yeah. footsteps on the roof. And see, patter bothers me. Yeah. If they're nine feet tall, <laughs> yeah. you don't patter, you, don't you patter. clomp. No. Right. You got to clomp. There's you got nine difference. feet tall. You got big feet. Pattering is, you know, what a, a little girl could do. Right? You yeah. know, the only That's thing a four-year-old. that yeah. our news story was missing was what this story had. Well, just in time for St. Patrick's Day, crowds are coming by the dozens <laughs> yeah, to that's get what I thought. The, uh, the sketch. We yeah. needed the yeah. sketch yeah. of the blurry. <laughs> a stick figure. Well, I, that's fun. Hey. That's fun. Uh, Why did it take so long for the story to break? This was the end of April. I don't know. We're into June. Well, weren't they trying to get the guys on camera? Maybe that was part of it? And then they gave I up. I don't know. I don't know. But that George Angel guy. says he has video of the beings. Come on, Angel. Let's see it. Let's we want to see it. Give me something to work with. Yeah. Maybe they're waiting for money. It's probably Ooh. the first thing they thought of before Ooh. they told anybody the story. Hey. Maybe they're saying, look, we have video of these uh, characters. But uh, what are you going to pay me? Who's going uh, who's gonna, to who's gonna believe anything now with the, the advent of uh, artificial intelligence yeah. and deep fakes? You can do anything on video and camera and audio. You know, this guy could go to the uh, the pawn. What's the pawn shop in Vegas? Oh, that TV? Rick pawn and stars? Uh, the pawn fat stars. Guy, yeah. They could take it in there and he'd have to say, well, I got to have a, I have to have an expert look at this. Yeah, yeah. I can give you a, like a thousand, <laughs> yeah. maybe a thousand fifty for this. I, it's going to you know. take me a while because Chumley's in jail right now and he's the expert. Uh, <laughs> There's just no resale well, market the for this. Yeah. Yesterday, I contended that those in the LGBTQA plus many alphabets and numbers community, you may foghorn that. All right. I believe they intend to be marginalized. It's 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 their modus operandi. Okay. It's 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 their cause celeb. It's the reason for their uh, having achieved a political protected class status. And if they weren't marginalized, they might fear that they would lose some of the attention they get. And I have as additional proof uh, the Awareness Days calendar. Oh, yeah. Uh, an emailer made this available to me. The Awareness Days calendar from the University of Nebraska. 
uh, because uh, it, there's a lot of they they manage to really fill the calendar with themselves. Now, do they sell those like you do for the? Boy I'm sure the and students stuff? just get these as part of their school material. So it's not a you fundraiser. Get a, you okay. get, no, this is just their gotcha. awareness calendar. January is National Mentoring Month, and the third week in January is No Name Calling Week. Oh, well, so we're screwed. Call anybody names. Yeah, that, that ain't going to work for me. <laughs> and there's a lot of legitimate stuff on the calendar. January 27th is International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Then February, we get Black History Month. We get Valentine's Day noted. And then the week after February 14th is Aero... A, a, a romantic awareness week. Not sure what that is. I don't know if that's to do with a Rome aroma or or what, but it's an it's an aromantic awareness week, followed by February twenty, the World Day of Social must, Justice. Must be Italian that's because it. they're they're in the social justice it's part of their milieu. The Roma. Wait, what did you say was on that calendar? Happy Valentine Day. Yep, that's on there. <laughs> March first, zero discrimination day. So there can be none on that none. day. Okay. So that's when I you know I normally discriminate every so you day. You have to but wait till a second. Okay. Okay. March eighth is International Women's Day. March twenty one is International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. And March thirty first is the International Transgender Day of Visibility. Huh. See. What does that mean? Well, you be you just particularly noticeable on that day. You mean like you because dress, you got to remain marginalized. You, so you like got to get hussy? out there. Yeah. Okay. April Day of Silence. That could be any day. Oh, April. Yeah, well, that answers that answers my question. Yeah. I was going to ask you: Is there a shut the bleep up day? Yeah, in April. <laughs> so it's, it's April. <laughs> April eighteenth, National Transgender HIV Testing Day. Okay. Right. Mm. April twenty two. That's Earth very. Day. That's very specific. Mm-hmm. Very. April 26th, Lesbian Visibility Day. Hey, how hey, you doing, gal? Yeah, so so looking we good have, today. Uh, we have, let's see, International Transgender Visibility. That's the last day in March. Okay. Lesbian Visibility is April 26th. Gotcha. That's Char and Maddie Day. Fantastic. In, yes. in May, May 16th is Honor Our LGBT Elders Day, because these people virtually oh, think they're as unique as Native Americans. The old queens, right. yeah. On May 17th, the very next day, we have the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, and Biphobia. Huh. And then the very day after that, on the 18th, World AIDS Vaccine Day. All right. May 21, World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development. May 22nd, Harvey Milk Day. He was what, the San Francisco City Councilman? Yep. May 24th, Pansexual and Panromantic Visibility Day. Hmm. What's pansexual? Look up pan... You like to cook for everybody. (laughs) Look up (laughs) panromantic. Just the way it sounds, like one word. through the Hubbard filter? Pan-romantic. Pan. June. June 5, World Environment Day. So we just missed that. June 12, Pulse Night of Remembrance. That's probably for the Pulse Nightclub in Florida. Oh. June 19th is Juneteenth. June 26 is LGBT Equality Day. June 26 is Anniversary of the Legalization of Same-Sex Marriage in the U.S., June 27 is National HIV Testing Day, and June 28 is Stonewall Riots Anniversary, and July 14th is International Non-Binary People's Day. What does pan-romantic mean? What exactly does it mean? Someone who is pan-romantic is romantically attracted to people of all gender identities. This doesn't mean you're ro- uh, romantically attracted to everyone, but that someone's gender doesn't really factor into whether you're romantically attracted to them or not. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I uh, think the, the, the lady that was on Survivor from Minnesota, dear God, she came in third place. She is pansexual. <laughs> is, is that different than panromantic? Romantic? Uh, let's see. Can panromantic asexual have a romantic relationship? I guess... But if, if you're attracted to whatever genders, there's two genders. Here's my question, you're just, Matthew. You're just bisexual. Yeah. Matthew, here's I my question. Almost. Yes, sir. Do I have to buy candy and flowers and a bleeping card and take him or her out for dinner? 
Yeah, because they probably have a soft side and you're dominant. So, well, September, uh, September. September. no, I mean, we already have Valentine's Day. I don't need more than one every year. I think one, one is good enough. September 15th is International Day of Democracy. Starting the Sunday before sept- September 23rd is Bisexual Awareness Week. Hey, hey. September 23rd, Celebrate Bisexuality Day. And the last week in September is Ally Week. Uh, we got the uh, first full week in October is Mental Illness Awareness Week. Okay, that's a good one. I that's legit. That, I find that uh, accurate. Uh, October 11, National Coming Out Day. October 19, Spirit Day, LGBT Center Awareness Day. October 26, Intersex Awareness Day. Last full week on, in October, Asexual Awareness Week. Okay. They're, they're, it's too much. They, they are filled, well, just two more months. November, Transgender Awareness Week in November. Intersex Day of Remembrance, November 8th. November 20, International Transgender Day of Remembrance, like they're World War II veterans or something. <laughs> yes. November 25th, International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. And December 1st, World AIDS Day, December 3rd, International Day of Persons with Disabilities. December 8th, Pansexual, Panromantic Pride Day. And December 10, Human Rights Day. We'll be back in just a I moment. am a homosexual. Yes, right. sir. <laughs> well, I know learn. You know, the investment game can be awfully tricky, especially in these volatile times. And that's why you need the best and also somebody that you can trust. And that's why I rely on Josh Arnold. We know him as Mr. Money Talk around these parts. And he's here for you. So give him a call today for that free 48-minute no-obligation consultation by dialing 952-925-5608. 952-925-5608. Josh has been at this a long time with a track record of success, and he's here to help you. So give him a call today. No obligation. That's right. No obligation. It's absolutely free. 952-925-5608. And tell them you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. <laughs> you, sir. I'm not doing anything, right? No. Oh. It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Souchere. Who's doing so? I am. I was just looking up a firearm here that you could probably find on uh, DK Mags or DKMags.com. Uh, my buddy just picked up an AK Anniversary Edition. Uh, it's a really cool looking firearm. And uh, if DK Mags doesn't have that baby in stock, I know they can order it for you. They have a wide selection, all sorts of firearms, um, pistols, revolvers, shotguns, rifles, along with the usual ammo, magazines, parts, accessories, smithing. It's a full-service joint serving the entire Twin Cities area. And then they serve uh, all of us beyond that area with a fantastic website, dkmags.com. That means special orders are no problem. If you're looking for a high standard revolver or a spunky uh, AK, they can find it. They'll be glad to help you find the exact firearm you're looking for, no matter how much or how little you want to spend. And you know what else they'll do? They'll buy your unwanted firearms, a single unit or... I don't know, maybe a whole arsenal, whatever you got, talk to them. They'll also do consignment and auction services. It's really a wonderful place, great staff, wonderful selection, very fair prices. You'll find DK Mags at Old 8 in New Brighton and on the web, dkmags.com. I don't want to... uh, Here it comes, here it comes. No, we've said this, I'm trying to think of a new way to say it... Uh, I don't want to live the life that the democratic socialists wish to bring upon us. I don't, I don't want you. to pay for it. I, I just don't want to live that kind of life. I'm with you. I, 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 I don't want. This isn't. I'm going to move speech. Yeah, no, I'm I going just. To we need Toronto. people back in <laughs> office with some grip of reality. We're learning now that the snow, uh, the city taking over, snow plowing is much favored by the Democratic Socialists, in fact, as part of their local platform, which leads me to believe that every city being taken over by Democratic Socialists 
probably have local demands unique to their city. And in Minneapolis, one of the local platform objectives is the government, the state, should take over shoveling sidewalks. And we learn now because of a a study delivered Thursday to the Minneapolis City Council Mm -hmm. yesterday that this will cost $116.2 million. Seems reasonable. Over the next three years and $40.6 million every year thereafter. And those are just (laughs) estimates. Which means it's going to cost more than that. Transportation Maintenance Director Joe... Promen uh, told the council that a, that a municipal sidewalk snow plan could begin as early as 2024 with 596 miles included in the pedestrian priority network, a grid of streets frequently used by pedestrians. The next year would add 657 miles of sidewalks in the cities, Camden, Central, Longfellow, Near North, Northeast, Phillips, Powderhorn, and University communities, those with the highest transportation equity scores based on demographic and socioeconomic census data. I don't want to live in their world. And and they're saying, well, that's too bad. You do. So we both have to figure out something. I don't need a babysitter. I I don't want to live in their world. I don't like it. I, I, I have some deep thoughts about it. Let me turn to the uh, jump of this story. Uh, I didn't think municipal snow shoveling would ever gain purchase, which is just shows you that I still have a lot to learn about this. Right. The third year would incorporate the remaining 657 miles in the Calhoun Isles, Nokomis, and Southwest communities, which is tantamount to them saying, we'll get to you rich white people last. According to the report, having the city take over sidewalk clearing would ensure consistent service, reduce the need for sidewalk inspections, and possibly drive down complaints delivered via the city's 311 line, of which there were more than 12,000 this winter when a historic 90 inches of snow and a relentless freeze-thaw cycle left ice pox sidewalks across Minneapolis. Let me stop right there. Because of the way nature behaved this winter, you as the homeowner or the city could not have done anything about that. It wouldn't make any difference. Right. Okay. I, I somewhat dispute that, though. This is a product of homeowners not taking responsibility. No. Get your ass out there and shovel your sidewalk. Right, but then, but then, it, but then if it rains, you're still going to be stuck with ice. True. True. So, and the city can't do anything about that, and... The homeowner can't do anything about that. So Especially all if you I'm wait, saying yeah. is, all I'm saying is, what are you saying? <laughs> that you can't win either way in terms of the. I think because they're democratic socialists and they live in a fantasy, they imagine perfectly dry, groomed sidewalks all the right. long. Nature doesn't yeah. do that. Well, that's not the way it works. Right. Uh, municipal snow plowing, uh, snow clearing might take longer than the current system. <laughs> At a which, low, low price of 116 mil. <laughs> which is the opposite of what the prior uh, paragraph says, Such. It would ensure consistent service, reduce the need for inspectors, blah, blah, blah. But transportation planner Cadence Novak warned that municipal snow clearing could take longer than the current system. The current system is you and me. The city now requires single-family home and duplex owners to clear their sidewalks down to the pavement within 24 hours, while business owners have four hours. Well, that might not be possible unless city workers use machinery through the night, and here's the windmilling. That means they would have a lot of diesel being uh, used, and that would uh, destroy the planet. So they're windmilled right there. There are other logistical pickles. City crews wouldn't be allowed to pile snow on private yards, as homeowners currently do. Instead, they'd have to haul and store the snow. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) store it. Yeah, they already do that, Matthew. 
A labor shortage could complicate hiring 30 full-time workers and 180 seasonal workers, a force large enough to implement the program. And the three-year phase-in approach would require ample communication with property owners to manage inevitable confusion about which streets would be cleared and when, what years they would have to keep shoveling, and when the city would take over. This is just... (laughs) <laughs> I, I, there's no reason to go on and rant and rave about this. I don't want to live in their world. This is, they're not smart people. This is ridiculous. There is nothing efficient about this. There is nothing, there is nothing uh, uh, credible about this. How can it's, they be so wasteful? It's ridiculously expensive. Uh, my gal, uh, Latricia Vita. Yep. Said the pre- presentation confirmed she wants to continue shoveling her own snow and she'll get her own dog-friendly de-icing products. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, that's that's the attitude to have. She said, I don't support this. I do think there are some things we can do to help seniors in our most vulnerable populations, but that's it. Well, Latricia Vito is correct. I can live in her world. Mm-hmm. I can't live in Chugati's world. No. Uh, what's her name? Rook Chugati what? She's uh, a, 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 a Aisha? Shug Tai. Oh, yeah. Aisha, Aisha, Shug Chugati. Tai. Aisha Chugati. She's and uh, a, the other one is Robin Wansley. Yeah, and they're conf- they're committed democratic socialists. Right. And they they imagine a world that I don't find agreeable, enjoyable, beautiful, joyful. Uh I they they um, they're I don't know what they heard at the kitchen table when their children, they were either destroyed there or in the failed academy, but they have no world I want a part of. A Chugati related a story about her mother who broke the cartilage in her knee. Well, let me stop right there. You don't really break cartilage. No, it tears. It tears. Like yeah, I've really torn it in really both knees. Yeah. It's never Fair broken. Enough. Meniscus. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get it fixed, too. I That's mean, right. It's not like a- Clean that right up. I can get you some cartilage. I can fix that for you by right. 3 o'clock. <laughs> Chukati related a story about her mom who broke the cartilage in her knee after slipping on an unsalted sidewalk while heavily pregnant. It left her without wit. It left her with lifelong mobility problems. Well, you know, it shouldn't have. I'm sorry for that. I don't want mom to be in a in harm's way, but you know, you can get that fixed. Right. Chugati's mom sure. is the only Minnesotan that's ever fallen down that's on right. the ice the in the winter. One. She's the only one. Well, Joe, too, because he had new shoes. Yeah, Don't forget. Right, right down in the street. <laughs> I think I went down like five times last winter. Whoa. And here again, we get real yeah. families. Real families is like working people. Yeah. Who are real families? Well, uh, you yeah. either shovel early in the morning or late in the uh, evening because you're working all day. Chugati related, uh, oh, she did that. Uh, real, real families' lives are impacted in immeasurable ways, Chugati said. What we're talking about doing is making an investment in a public good, and all investments in accessibility and safety, all public goods are expensive. Chugati is simply wrong. There's no one there to say, go bleep yourself. Here's the problem. The Democratic Socialists do not create, they do not build, they do not invent. Mm -hmm. They look at what's been created, they look at what's been built, and they look at what's been invented, and to give themselves... The power of credibility to give themselves some basis for for their perversions and distortions, they wish to take those creativities, those buildings, and those inventions apart, and I hate to use their word, but reimagine them. And they think they're doing something that's useful, but they're reimagining them in completely useless ways. Right. It's what do you say? They're when you're trying to do something, seem like you're uh, useful. 
That's us. Uh, officious. Oh. They're being officious. Well, they, they think they're being altruistic, and they are so long as they think they can be altruistic with your money. But they're not accomplishing anything. And in the act of reimagining that which has already been created, built, assembled, and invented, what they're doing is diminishing individual liberty in the creation of those things. They're taking away individual liberty and replacing it with the actions of the state. And there are people in Minneapolis, we now know, because of the way they vote, that will find this perfectly agreeable. They're lazy, Mm -hmm. and they don't want to shovel. But there are many people, many GLers, even in Minneapolis, who are agreeing with every word I say now because they're thinking, Asia Shugati, you've taken something as simple as snow. You've taken something as simple as snow, and you've bollocked it up Mm -hmm. to the tune of an estimated $116 million for three years, $40 million a year after that, and you've introduced, without apology, the idea that machinery will have to be running 24 hours a day to accomplish this. There goes your there goes your contesting air pollution. You've just windmilled yourself. Your ideas are childish and they don't make sense. They don't work. For Other than Latricia Vita, who do I appeal to? Who do I appeal to to say these things? Who do I go to and nope. say why can't you, the city council, and the mayor Fry? I can't believe Fry. I'm going to cut Fry some slack. I can't believe he would <clears throat> think this is a good idea. He initially came out against it when this was brought up. What was it, six months, a year ago? Yeah. He was initially against it. But we now know something uh, important. We now know that this comes from the Democratic Socialist platform. Right. It just happens to be part of the local demands or the local <clears throat> platform and the the local platform in New York might might call for some other peculiarities but last paragraph of the piece um it's quoting Andrew Johnson mm-hmm. also a council member you mm-hmm. should read that one if you add up 15 departments of the city this would be more than their collective budgets he said <laughs> and in fact if this was its own standalone department it would be the fourth largest it would be behind public works police and fire holy wow. crap jeez yep there's your there's your outright clue that this is outrageous you've taken something as simple as snow and you've taken something as simple as it's my responsibility to shovel my sidewalk you have taken something that works and you're turning it into something that will not work well, and not to mention, who's going to sign up for this job? Are you going to want to get into it? Because they're most likely going to use machinery to do this. Are you going to want to drive a, a um, bobcat through yeah. Dowling Avenue? Yeah, or? actually, uh, I, I'm one of those guys. Um, the problem, though, Chris, and you brought something up, the city also, they don't have enough equipment at this point. So they've got to buy more snow blowers, more tractors, more um, front-end loaders. More skid loaders, yeah. pr- probably a few more tool cats. Probably a few more dump trucks. And are they, they going to go out and buy used equipment? And electric no, snow no. blowers don't work. No, so my guys at Tri-State Bobcat, they love this, and I sure. don't blame them because mm-hmm. this is wonderful. And then they're also going to have to hire a ton of seasonal workers. 180. Yep. Or we could just get those aliens to drive those front-end loaders up here. Right. Come on down. Well, they, they can't figure them out. <laughs> That's true. They just <laughs> need city, training. The city data shows that most residents don't need help shoveling. Just 6% draw repeated complaints. Oh, but this God. is what you get with democratic socialism. You get a de facto collectivism, and it, it doesn't work. Uh, if you want something that works, get a hold of Mueller Memorial for funerals and cremations. I have a I have a testimonial that just came in, and uh, the staff is caring, and they met every need with understanding, patience, and compassion. The additional services such as grief counseling and estate planning are incredibly helpful. Using Mueller Mortuary was definitely the right decision. 
Very happy with the care and help in dealing with the difficulty surrounding the passing of a loved one, and I highly recommend it. I've known Scott Mueller all my life. I've known the Mueller family all my life. They've been helping people with these tough times in life for more than 75 years, and they lighten it up. They make it uh, a celebration. They know how to turn this into a celebration and calm your anxiety about this, calm your fears about it. And they, uh, well, like at my mom's, we had the bar. You know, yeah. you know like I said the other day, some people, some people are still there. It was fa- <laughs> and and it, it, uh, it does not have to be frightening and intimidating. Mueller is in the business of making sure that uh, you're going to feel okay about this. Of course, it's a tough time, but you're going to feel okay and they're going to handle it. You're going to handle it with ease. Talk to Mueller Memorial and uh, share whatever you feel comfortable with about your connection with the people you're going to celebrate, and they will take care of everything. MuellerMemorial.com. Just like I've been telling you this past week, uh, there's an event coming up next year. Yes, a year away, so plan accordingly. Get it in the budget right now. Get it on your calendar right now. I'm talking about cruising down the coast of Croatia with me, the Rook, Several members of my family are also going. They're signing up as well. And I know that some garage logicians have already contacted Teresa and Maria at Escape With Us Vacations to get information and to get their reservation. You can do the same thing by going to escapewithusvacations.com. It's up there. The Adriatic King. Click on that, and you'll find out everything that's included. Lunch and breakfast daily, welcome dinner, captains. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. There's so much. Entrance fees, transfers, all sorts of great stuff. Check out this ship online at escapewithusvacations.com. Put this on your calendar, July 14th to the 21st of 2024. Yes, it's next year, not this summer. So start putting your money away, and we're going to have a blast of a time. Now, the Adriatic Kings, it's seven-night, 18-cabin motor yacht, and we will be cruising. We're going to have a blast. Escapewithusvacation.com. Come cruising with the Rook. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and you'll never forget it. Escapewithusvacations.com. Author's Corner. Patrick Royce joining us for sports. There's a lot of questions I have. <laughs> we uh, we have the live PGA merger. I don't yeah. think that's I don't think that's shaken out yet in ways that we completely understand. I think they have some problems on how are they going to. Uh, does the PGA, for example, feel obligated? to pay the players who didn't jump to live so long as the live players who got fattened checkbooks come back to the PGA? That is a big question. I mean, Tiger Woods is not going to be broke when this is over, but he did turn down $800 million so, uh, <laughs> because you begged him to uh, stay. Even though he wasn't going to play, they offered him $800 million to come and show up, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know how that how that works out. Here's the other thing I got in mind. How does the PGA Tour continue to say it's a nonprofit? Right. They're, they're part of a profitable company. But, the, you know, all these sponsors are basically writing it off as a charitable cause. Well, I, I, I'm glad to see somebody in Congress has already brought up to take that exemption away from them. Mm-hmm. Because you can't go to you, you can't sign on with the devil and uh, who's the profiteer of all time and then claim that you're still nonprofit. I can't I can't believe so. Uh, I I don't know. It's uh, uh, politically Monahan. I mean, what they gave no hint to no none of his players. The the PGA Tour is players. It's supposed to be the two hundred players. I thought whatever. they owned it. They do. They yeah. own it. So I don't know how he can just uh, go off. And uh, they've a- obviously the the board uh, has uh, has taken away all power here. But uh, why do you I, think, I think why do you think Liv never offered Roy McIlroy any money to join them? Oh, they did. They did. According they did. to Roy McIlroy, they said uh, he never was approached. Never. Oh, really? Yep. Well, is it because they know he was going to say? I no? don't know. Oh. He never was approached. That's according to him. 
Yeah, and he became the number one most outspoken critic as he... he Maybe he was mad. (laughs) Maybe he said, uh, I'm the sacrificial lamb. But what are we going to... It didn't sound like the live tournaments are going to... What what about the live tournaments? Are they going? We don't have any idea if they're going away. If they're just all under the same umbrella now, uh, what, what's going on? I don't. Know. That's why I say we have. There's so much to shake out. We don't know anything really. Yeah, no, except that uh, you know it's. Uh, I, I if if it's still forty, the same forty eight guys playing every week and calling themselves the crushers and the bruisers and yeah. everything like that. <laughs> Now, Tim Heron, I asked Tim Heron about it. I said, what? Let's get rid of this team. One thing we got to have is you get rid of these stupid teams. And he said he thinks that's for gambling. He thinks that's for, like, sports books and stuff oh. that they can go in there and bet on the crushers to win the tournament at such and such an odds or something. He thinks that's for gambling. But I... Uh, it's uh, they got they got you were right though originally last Monday they just got scared of the air of money because they can buy anything they want so that's right they and, couldn't afford to keep it going in court no well I I don't even know if it was court I think it was just uh, you know trying to keep more guys from you know they upped all their purses so all they live had to do was up their purses more they, yep. it's funny money my and Panthers then, stayed alive. Yes, they did. Guy gave up that goal. I don't. I know he's been crazy that Vegas goalie, but I don't trust that guy. Fat little guy flying all over the place and hoping the puck hits him. I don't know if that's uh, is that Aiden Hill. Is yeah, Aiden Hill. Aiden Hill. Yeah. He's that does not appear to be the strength of their team, but it is. Uh, that crowd didn't. I did see the tying goal, and they went bananas. Mm-hmm. What you call it? Shouldn't have been playing though. Oh, uh, uh, the big kid, the kid, the kid, Jack or the Walt, Walt's kid. He should have been suspended. Oh, to Chuck. It's a Chuck. He took a he took a cheap shot punch in game one, and he had two two misconducts in game two. He should have been suspended, but they didn't want to do that to Florida coming home. Game Who's three. Walt to Chuck? Well, it's oh, the old man was a great player. Yeah, isn't that Keith? His name was not Walt, though. I think his name was Keith to Chuck. Keith, yeah, this is who's this guy? Who's Walt? The kid on the ice? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was Keith. I thought it was Walt. Who was Walt? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Oh, look, you're yeah. thinking of Wally Carbo or something. I don't. You got <laughs> you got wrestling on your mind with the Crushers and the Bruisers. But, uh, <laughs> that kid can look up in the stands and see what he's going to look like in 20 years. Patrick, <laughs> I stand corrected. Walt Kachuk was a Canadian hockey player that was born in 1947. Okay, see. Well, what's the kid's uh, name? Keith. Walt? Keith. No, the kid so on the is ice the... is not Keith. <laughs> oh. No, this is the grandson. No, no. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Three generations. So, uh, Is this a bit? Uh, Do you yeah. guys are, is this, <laughs> did you script this? I don't know. I think they rehearsed base. it. Third base. <laughs> <laughs> Who's up first? Tomorrow. Uh, hey, Joe, last <laughs> night I was at beautiful CHS Field. Yes. And I saw my first game with the uh, computerized umpire. Oh. And it's uh, it's not really terribly intrusive, uh, but it's it, you wouldn't know, remember this guy, but Reavers would. It's like watching Tim McClellan umpire every game. Oh, God. It's, there's, there's, like, there's like a one second. It's, it, there's a tick before they, you know, they get the signal of what it is, the ump, the home plate umpire, ball okay. or strike, and then they make their signal. It's maybe a second. But you don't really notice it. It isn't really. Uh, where does the sig- Where does the strike or ball get announced? Uh, no, just the umpire does it with it, just like he's always done it. Oh, I uh, see. But he's holding a machine. No, I'm not. I think it's in his ear. I think it's in his ear. You know, or maybe some kind of a buzz he gets or something. But it's 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 not it's not holding any machine. Or well, did you find something. it to be more accurate than you're accustomed to? I was sitting down the, uh, the first baseline, and I can't I couldn't really tell. But they they can't turn around and complain because there's what are you gonna who are you gonna Frank Viola did get thrown out of a game a oh, couple yeah. years ago for arguing with the machine, but yeah. uh, but uh, but there's there's nothing you you do get the surprise look once in a while from the hitter saying 
Yeah. The computer thought that was a strike, but... Uh, I'm opposed, I, of course. Yes. It's coming next year, I think. Uh, I was over talking to Toby Gardner for a while, and he says, everything they have us do the next year and then in the big Oof. leagues, they're doing it. So mm. I, I think it might happen. Although, crowd-wise, they have this other stupid system where the crowd gets more into it. Where Now, starting tonight, if you go to St. Paul, They'll use the challenge system. So, in other words, the umpire makes the calls, and the team gets three ball and strike challenges per game. And it can't come from the manager. It's got to come from the the pitcher, the hitter, or the catcher. This is artificial intelligence. I know, and they do it by uh, patting themselves on the head. But what you can't, he said, Gardner told me, the problem is, when a pitcher gets miffed in the first inning and blows two of the challenges, he only got one left, you know. And, and the, the pitcher's mad at not getting a strike. And this is uh, this is not good. No, I don't like this. No, at this all. is I no, don't like no, where this I'd, is I'd going. I'd rather go. I'd rather go whole computer than the challenge system. I'd rather zero computers. I, I don't want. They computers. should have a challenge system and then let the crowd decide yeah. on the final. <laughs> yeah, the crowd should be able to so be the final. Back in the days of the Romans. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yep. No. No. Burn yeah. them at the stake. Yeah. <laughs> Are we at a Polanco watch now and a Buxton watch? Uh, Polanco is probably uh, DL, uh, but they're gonna. They didn't call. I was at. I was at uh, CHS Field thinking that Julian would get called up after uh, Polanco pulled his uh, whatever he did, Hammy again. And uh, but they didn't. They didn't make the phone call. He batted fourth in both games last night, and uh, then they're. Uh, yeah, but they. I think. I think they already got him a ticket for uh, Toronto if Polanco can't go after his workout this morning. I mean, this afternoon, which the odds of him passing a workout with Doc Rock standing there are nil, right? (laughs) He should be there. And they still got your guy Kepler. They're not taking your advice. Boy, he got in the doghouse with the manager, though. Mm -hmm. One of the first times in his four or five years here, Rocco came out and ripped him about falling asleep at the switch at first base when the other guy stole third. They weren't holding him on Kepler. Yeah. And he didn't he didn't advance the second when Taylor stole third. So yeah, the uh, manager was not no he's I don't think I think he might have played his last game at Target Field. I think they they gave him this wow. him something. I think they're ready to pull the plug. Yeah. Wow. I really do. No. I've talked to somebody who used to be in real close contact with him. I shouldn't name, mm-hmm. but he's on the radio this week. I, I knew he was going to say that. I shouldn't <laughs> name him. Who, who Molly? But I mentioned him. I mentioned him to the other day. To Jesus. The other day. And the guy said, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm not identifying who the No, is. no, you would never do that. Is he doing color on the radio? <laughs> I can't go there. No, I, I you guys would make <laughs> awful spies. Right. Oh, Jesus, you're just you're awful. Really, really bad. Wow. Okay, yeah, we'd be spies. Okay, I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Don't shoot like, me. I'm going to give you a hint. You're like Aykroyd and Chevy Chase. This is awful. <laughs> Give you, yeah, yeah, if you don't tell me who that spy is. I'm not telling you, but I'll give you a hint. All right, I found the names. It's Matthew Kachuk. His brother Brady also plays for the yeah. Ottawa Senators. And when Kachuk was growing up, this is Keith now, he was unsure of his heritage, so he told the reporter it could be, I don't know, Polish, Russian, or Ukrainian. It's one of those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talking but, about his but, surname. But it is... is, is Keith Walter's kid? Uh, I couldn't find out if that's the case or not, but there was a Walt Kachuk. It doesn't, that would not seem to, because Walt's got to be 75, 77, yeah, 70, Keith's, 76. Keith's 51. Keith's 51? Yeah. Well, how old's Matthew? Uh, 20. Well, then Keith is Matthew's dad. Right. Yeah. 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 But I knew there was a Walt, but I thought maybe he was a wrestler or something. But I heard a Walt. Thing. Yeah. Hey, Rook, we uh, sad to see the Iron Sheik uh, pass from this bale of tears. Yeah, you know, uh, we didn't really discuss it that much. I'm more into Sheik Adnan El Casey. Um. Yeah, the other one was had, was much more popular around here. But you got to give a guy credit 
for being a bad guy for taking an Iranian flag into the ring right. yeah. during the hostage. During the, the height. Season. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the height the, no, that's that a bad is, guy. <laughs> that's a balls. That's a guy who wants you to know he's a bad guy. Right. You know? Did you follow him on Twitter, oh, Patrick? God, he, yes. he had a oh, great Twitter account. But, but somebody was doing it for him. I saw, I read. I mean, oh. I had the ideas, but somebody else was put, was making the terrible English and everything. That yeah. He did. Calling yeah. everybody jabronis, I love that. <laughs> yeah. To the yeah, point right. where he would, you know, whatever a relative topic was. He, for instance, when Conseco had that, he says, "Bleep the Jose Conseco!" Like he would just be randomly yeah. mad at Jose. Yeah. Yeah, it was right. great. A lot of his he, tweets uh, started with the bleep word. Yeah, right. <laughs> Vern, Vern, found, Vern found him and this. I mean, trained him originally. He, he started here and then he. And then he went off, and of course, like most of them, made all his money at the WWF or whatever they call themselves now. So, but, well, we'll uh, see you Monday, Patrick. It was a good bag. Let me bring up my favorite wrestling match ever once again. All right, we got the guy from the French Foreign Legion, Sage Sergeant Goulet. Yep, wrestling Baron von Roschke, who's marching around like a Nazi. Right, and the whole crowd's rooting for the Baron against the guy from the French Foreign Legion. I can never figure that one. I can never figure that one. No, 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 not we astute prefer, followers of history, are they? They preferred the Nazi. Yeah, the yeah. Him. Well, those French, you know, they're... they didn't fight that. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. All right, thank you. Are we on the air Monday? Yes, yes we sir. are. Yes, sir. All right, I'm looking forward to. it. All right. Thank you. Uh, before we go, i got to remind you once again about the best water around, and that comes to us from our friends at Hofferman Water and Connecticut. Joe, I have been bragging to you about how great. Look at this. You want this nice water right here? It looks good. You it can have clear. it right inside of Crystal your home clear. with a brand-new drinking water system. I've been a customer of Hofferman and Connecticut for years, and I'm so happy that I made the switch, and I think that you will be too. So give them a call today, 952 894 Four zero four zero. That's their phone number. You can also just go visit their website at HoffermanWater.com. You go on that website, you're going to see every type of system that they have to offer, whether it's a water softener, a drinking water system, or an odor filtration system. Whatever you're looking for, they're going to take care of you. And that's because Hofferman Water has been proudly serving the state of Minnesota for over 50 years. Please give them a call today. Get on that schedule and let, let them know you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Town council member. Here's what you're missing. I'm panicking that I've promised all the girls these Taylor Swift tickets. And I'm... That's going to cost you ten grand. Yeah, yeah, at this point, yeah, they're going to wait your game here. Man. Nine tickets. Oh, that's going to cost you twenty grand. Well, I won't pay twenty grand. I'll say nine mm. tickets. They will hate you forever. You already you, promised you, them. Do you realize what you're going to spend? Seriously, I'm sure they're very expensive. You're at, to get in the door. You're going to be spending three hundred bucks just to get in. I'll go three hundred. That's twenty seven. But they're going to be sitting on the freaking roof. I know somebody that just paid twelve grand for how many tickets? Ooh. Three. Four? You oh, Jesus, what I got into here. Go behind the scenes of Garage Logic with unfiltered audio and video access, invites to exclusive events, an emailed newsletter from the mayor himself, and more by signing up at garagelogic.com. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life, Joe Souchere. Okay, before we talk about... Um, Toro Zero Turn Mowers, a special uh, memo here for Robin Wansley and uh, Aisha Shigati. Um, the website is tristatebobcat.com. <laughs> nice. They have everything you could possibly imagine for snow removal. Um, they can set you up, trust me. Uh, you know what else they have? They have the Toro Time Cutter Zero Turn Mowers, and a couple of them are on sale. The 54-inch My Ride Suspension. It should be called My Magic Carpet Ride Suspension, forty eight ninety nine. But then you get a $400 rebate, knocking that down to forty two ninety nine. Frankly, I'd go out the door with that one. That's me. Uh, but this other one, the 50-inch Time Cutter, it's, a, it's an attractive price. It's already low, thirty eight ninety nine. Toro gives you an instant rebate, 100 bucks, so that drops that. But then you get all this warranty. Tri-State uh, throws in a five-year warranty, and you already have the Toro Total Care Warranty Extension. That's a $460 value. That's pretty good. That means 
If you live within 25 miles of the joint, they'll pick it up and drop it off for free. They also give you a 30% reimbursement on covered maintenance items. This is a wonderful deal, and you can find Tri-State everywhere in the metro. We're talking Burnsville, Lille, Canada, where pigs were on the loose this morning, uh, Hudson, Wisconsin, and Owatonna, Mankeys, now part of the Tri-State family, and Tri-State Bobcat opening soon in Wisconsin, Highway 8 in St. Croix Falls. And yeah, if you're on the Minnesota City Council, tristatebobcat.com. Here's John Haidt. Thank you, Joe. In the news, the criminal indictment against Donald Trump over his handling of classified government records was unsealed in the past hour. It's a 37-count indictment, among other allegations that from the grand jury, it says Trump showed classified documents to other people after leaving office in 2021. 31 of the accounts accused Trump of willful retention of national defense information. He's also charged with conspiracy to obstruct justice, withholding a document or record, corruptly concealing a document or record, concealing a document in a federal investigation, scheme to conceal, and false statements and misrepresentations. The indictment notes as he departed the White House, he caused scores of boxes, many of which contained classified documents to be transported to his Mar-a-Lago club in Palm Beach, Florida, where he maintained his residence. He was not authorized, according to the indictments, to possess or retain any of those classified documents. Among other things that the document says, and this is reading directly from it, the classified documents stored in his boxes, including information regarding defense and weapons capabilities of both the United States and foreign countries, United States nuclear programs, potential vulnerabilities of the United States and its allies to military attack, and plans for possible retaliation in response to a foreign attack. The unauthorized disclosure, it continues, of these classified documents could put at risk the national security of the United States, foreign relations, the safety of U.S. military and human sources, and the continued viability of sensitive intelligence collection methods. I'm not reading anything about it. Do you know why? Hmm. Nothing will come of this. You don't think so? I continue I think this to is, insist nothing this, will come this of this. This is an effort to keep him from running for office. He didn't do anything that all the other presidents have been doing for years, right? Didn't we just discover Biden had a bunch of crap in a couple of places? Here's my question. Yep. Here. Is, uh, everything's on computer. Why are they printing everything out and putting <laughs> it in boxes? A, that's a good I point, don't Matt. You don't, he doesn't the, need uh, to take the uh, national defense plan. But you'll be 15 minutes late paying your property taxes. You're, you're, Printer uh, you know what's correct? I, have you bought ink lately? It's worse than buying gas. Yeah, ink's expensive. Ink's very expensive. The, uh, the difference uh, between the Biden and Pence papers that were yeah, being held. Yeah, go uh, ahead, Trump, uh, Hunter. Yeah, Trump. Trump was asked to turn in part of these documents and would uh-huh. not return them. Mm. Ones that contain security information about the U.S. And Hunter and uh, Hunter, yeah, uh, Biden and uh, Pence immediately told the U.S. Justice Department they had them. What about Hillary and uh, her service, uh, her server? Anything about that, John? Who cares? Nothing will ever come of any of this. I'm just going to keep pushing you. (laughs) Why would they want them, though? Seriously, why would they want that printed out paper in their box so he can show it to guys during a cocktail party. Oh, my gosh. Boy, I don't think he has any I, friends. I, I guess Joe's not the only naive one. All right, moving right along early Friday. <laughs> you are <laughs> such a trumpet What, you think he'd sell them? He, I don't, uh, as bad as he, he is, I don't, well, you know what? He'd do anything. He'd are we talking eBay them. here or um, Facebook Marketplace? The marketplace? <laughs> <laughs> if the ad is up, it's still for sale. <laughs> do you have to be a, a member of, of Facebook to access the Marketplace? Yes. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Imagine. Just do it. I, I really What's should. Just do I'm it. hearing that uh, Marketplace is supplanting Craigslist. 100%. Oh, it, it has. has a long it's, time it's ago. It's left it in its dust. Really? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yes. Let's yeah. see what I have saved today. Uh, 65 Impala, a 62 Studebaker, an 81 GMC 3500, a 74 Chevy Silverado, a 79 Jeep Wagoneer. Uh, can you, can you uh, localize them? Yeah. In other yeah. words, I don't care if somebody's got something for sale in Omaha. How yeah, do you I can do can, a radius? A radius. Well, mm-hmm. That's the mystery of marketplace. If you're looking for something and it's within a hundred miles, it's going to cost you five hundred dollars. However, if it's for sale in Nebraska, 
it's $50. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it always works. And I just want I'm, it stated for the record, I was the only one that didn't participate in the previous conversation, so don't freaking email me. Well, I'm not done with this conversation. Oh, so. for God's <laughs> sake. Jesus, and you will not let it go. Well, there's more news to add to it today. Earlier today, two of Trump's lawyers resigned from representing him in this classified documents case. Uh, and Walt Nauta, an aide to Trump, charged by the same grand jury with the same exact thing that uh, the former president was charged with. Nauta was indicted by the same grand jury. Not clear immediately what the charges are exactly. He did serve as valet in the Trump White House and left his role to join Trump as a person laid in early 2021. Trump praised Nauta in a Truth Social post after he found out he had been charged, writing he was a Navy veteran who served proudly with me in the White House, retired as senior chief, and then transitioned into private life as a person laid. Uh, also, we had a judge appointed this morning, and uh, it'll be a familiar name to anybody who's followed all of this, Federal Judge Eileen Cannon, a nominee of Donald Trump, who was widely criticized for ruling in the former president's favor during the classified documents case earlier, will oversee the criminal indictment at least at first. Cannon is set to preside over Trump's first appearance Tuesday in federal district court in Miami. The latest twist in a legal battle of historical magnitude, although you guys would rather talk about Facebook. It remains <laughs> unclear at this stage, I however, would. Cannon will ultimately preside over the entire Trump legal saga. Now, remember, here's why I, nothing it, will happen. Yes, sir. The uh, as much as the establishment does not like Trump, Trump is afforded the perks of being on the third rail. So this would be the same as if it was a Democratic president or whatever. Nothing will come of this. Nothing. Because there's too many loopholes, too many back doors, too many side doors, too many outs, too many trap doors. This guy just left. We need a third assistant chief prosecutor. They have an endless way to make this absolutely oh, meaningless. I, I beg to differ if the shoe were on the other party, this it wouldn't have gone this far. Well, that might be true, but <clears throat> it's not going anywhere. You guys are all nuts, but okay. Uh, uh, back to more news. Well, yeah, speaking of demo insane Democrats running amok, do you have uh, the story about the pigs on the freeway this morning? I, it's my next story, as a matter of fact. They were all, all, they, they were all over that place. They escape? Yeah, they escaped. They escaped. Traffic issues this morning in the area of I-694E and 35E after a truck hauling pigs overturned, causing the animals to get loose and roam the highways. The crash happened around 7.30 this morning. Shortly after, the Department of Transportation said the eastbound lanes of 694 will be closed until about 1. So uh, we're recording this now at, what, 1.15, so they should be open, right? No, no pigs they, dumb. If you They're followed still not me, open. If you followed me on Twitter, you'd learn it opened about an hour and a half ago. Well, I'd follow you, but you might say something like this stuff you've been I think still any the last smart five enough minutes. To, to just say hi this is my chance to get yes. out of there yes yes like sit yes. at a picnic table there, with your sunglasses right. and the legs there there is a good reading the newspaper there's a good chance that there's some pigs on the loose in little canada <laughs> shoreview and uh yeah I did see somebody's tweet, though, that some got hit, right? Is that, is that correct? Uh, yes. Is, I have video of one uh, doing <laughs> oh, no. the, the final kicks. It's, oh, when the cow got loose, Rook, and we interviewed the cow? Yes. Flopping around. I did not like that. Oakdale. I did not like that. Uh, <laughs> Groundhopper's Old Fashioned Meats with two locations. Something <laughs> funny and ironic about a, uh, a bunch of police officers chasing pigs. Well, oh, I don't think oh, the oh, cops will find it, that funny. <laughs> Jimmy Dean. <laughs> Uh, All right, now then, to, to other news, a, a serious story here. Prosecutors have now charged a second person with murder in connection to the shooting that killed the St. Paul father outside his home last month. Ramsey County prosecutors have charged 18-year-old Ta Mla with second-degree intentional murder and the death of 44-year-old Michael Brazell. Brazell, a youth hockey coach, was fatally shot the morning of May 6th when he confronted someone who was apparently trying to break into his wife's car. A week later, 17-year-old Clee Sui was arrested and charged with Brazell's murder. Police were able to review the review uh, review surveillance video from nearby homes and noted the videos picked up gunshots and a black coupe that sped off. 
A criminal complaint notes another neighbor told the officers their vehicle had also been rummaged through before the shooting. Their surveillance video showed the same black vehicle involved. Sui was arrested after a bumper from a vehicle that matched the black coupe's description was found in Lauderdale a short time later. The license plate on that bumper pointed officers to Sui. Court documents note that Sui was spotted with someone else at around 10 in the morning, May 6th, and Sui paid for scooter rentals using the name of Zaza for the person he was with. Officers were able to identify Zaza as Mla, whose Facebook account name is Zaza. Uh Additionally, court documents state that his phone location data showed he was in the same area as Sui. The complaint says officers noticed pictures from Sui's cloud library that showed him and Mla together in late April and Mla wearing the same hooded sweatshirt he wore shortly after Brazil's murder. Officers also found a message from Mla to Sui on April 19th, asking if Sui still needed a gun. He allegedly replied he did need one for the following week. Mla was arrested during a traffic stop Tuesday. Officers found a handgun under the front passenger seat of the car he was in. During an interview with police, the complaint says that Mla admitted he and Sui were looking for items to steal in cars, and he was driving because Sui was tired. He said Brazel then surprised him and grabbed him from behind, he then heard gunshots and quickly drove off. Mla added he didn't see Sui shoot Brazil. Eventually said the gun found in his vehicle Tuesday was the same gun used to kill Brazil. The depth of Sui's remorse is quoted in the St. Paul paper. Yeah. My bad, bro. Sorry. Yeah. Do you Deprive under- him of oxygen. Yeah. I was not able to follow any of that. That was too much information. If you're going to move to this country, get a bleep load of vowels to come with you. Get some vowels. <laughs> that was his direct quote to the police. Get some goddamn vowels. Wow. There's a vowel in there. Just one. Yeah, and not enough vowels. <laughs> I kept reading it as Mia when I first read the story in the paper. <clears throat> Tia and Mia. Then I re- yeah. And then I realized it was Onomatopoeia. Yeah. Uh, he does have two j- prior juvenile cases, by the way, involving gun possession. However, adjudication. Which one? Was Sweet or the other moron? Blah. Yeah. Blah. They were all oh. bad guys, though, right? Yes. All of them? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well. Yeah. yeah. So. There yeah. You, you know. So. Uh, Chris, do we need to take a break during this? Uh, A-E-I-O no? and you. Yes. you okay. Know, I mean. E-I-E-I-O. Oh. Apparently, we're going to take a break, I think. Yeah. But not before I let you all know <laughs> but first, that it's we'll mosquito we'll season here in the Twin Cities we'll and see. in the great state of Minnesota. So that's why you need to call the best. And start with my friends at Mosquito Shield. I've used them. They work. Trust me. My neighbor even came over and said, oh, yeah, who's your who's your guy? I said, it's Mo Shield. But, Rob, don't use the dash. It's oh, moshield.com. Yeah. That's their website. Go on their website and you enter your zip code, and you're going to find out where and when they can take care of you. It's Ray and Mike, a couple of GLers, the father and son team behind Mosquito Shield. And getting rid of mosquitoes and ticks, that's their expertise. They aren't like other pest control companies that spray for bugs. They focus on the mosquitoes and the ticks only. And they use that proprietary blend that was invented by the founder of Mosquito Shield, and it's used exclusively by the company. You can't go buy this stuff on the shelf. They're going to take great care of you and your yard. They come out every 10 to 17 days for an application, and they do so until the ticks and the mosquitoes go dormant. They also stand behind their work. If for any reason you need them in between applications, they will do an additional service call at absolutely no charge. That's because they want you to choose when it's time to go inside, not the mosquitoes and the ticks. So, MoShield.com or give Kelsey and Mike a call directly after you finish reading that newspaper at 612-619-1556. You mentioned GL and you are going to get $50 off your service. He's too he has the end of the world as we here. know it and he feels fine. Joe Suchere. Did you escape it? Did you escape it? I don't say es- escape. Okay, I maybe, say escape. Maybe you escaped it. You escaped this heat with uh, absolutely no problem at all. I'm happy for you. When you have a problem, I have the right family, the right company located in Minneapolis for a century. 
four generations, welterheating.com. Welterheating.com will come out and fix your air conditioning unit or your heating unit that you're about to put to sleep for several months right now. And also the air purification. That's huge right now. And Welter is the team to help you out with that. If you have questions or want to make an appointment, go old school, 612 825-6867, 612-825-6867, 825-6867, 612-825-6867. Better yet, poke around their website. You can make an appointment online at welterheating.com, as well as look at their Q&A. They have many questions and many answers listed right there for you to look at. You might be having that same problem. These are common problems that they put online so that you could possibly save some money when it gets fixed. Welterheating.com, once again, 100 years, four generations, air condition your shelter with Ray Ann Welter. In other news, a grainy black and white gun sight video that Russia released this week to bolster a claim its military blew up some of Ukraine's most fearsome tanks actually documented the destruction of a farm tractor according to a visual analysis by the Associated Press. I hope it was a John Deere. The Russian embassy in Washington announced Monday on Twitter its forces had, in their words, annihilated eight German-made Leopard tanks, among the most advanced and powerful weapons that NATO countries have provided to Ukraine. But an analysis of the video, which was recorded at night, appears to be large pieces of stationary farm machinery parked in a field, <laughs> specifically a self-propelled sprayer and two combines used to harvest corn and wheat. The vehicle Whoops. hit by the... The vehicle hit by the... <laughs> this reminds me of another president and something crazy he would say. <laughs> the vehicle hit by the Russian <laughs> missile has four large wheels and sits high off the ground. Leopard 2 tanks are low slung and they don't have wheels. They have treads like a bulldozer. Didn't our, what did he say? Something about our Air Force kicking ass during the revolution or some stupid thing like yeah, that? Yeah, they, they, they destroyed all the British airports during the revolution. <laughs> yeah. I think was, uh, yeah. 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 Easter is Christ's birthday. You know. yeah. Easter is Christ's birthday. Yeah. Well, you know. Horrified residents today gathered at the French playground where four preschool children were stabbed by a Syrian refugee with one local man weeping uncontrollably. Devastated locals congregated in the town of Annecy to lay flowers and light candles for the four victims, including a three-year-old British girl who were stabbed by 31-year-old Abdelmash Hanoun. The attacker had screamed in the name of Jesus Christ and clenched onto a necklace with a crucifix as he launched his rampage. Video shows Hanan running into the small playground, repeatedly stabbing a toddler in his carriage oh. while the screaming mother tried to protect the toddler. Further footage shows the recently divorced Hanon later being chased across the park by locals and police before he was shot by a police officer and pinned to the ground. The attack left the four children with serious stab injuries and medics at Grenoble Hospital today. So the two of them remain in critical condition the two others are in stable condition. Dr. Gladys McCary is a 102-year-old doctor with a passion for what she prefers to call living medicine. She encourages her patients to look at disease and pain as teachers to understand what illnesses are showing them about their bodies. She's also an author. She wrote a book telling you how to live to be 102. Does she smoke? Uh, she does not. In fact, yeah. here's here's her routine, daily yep. routine. <laughs> You'll live to be 102, Joe, if you do this. All right. Get nine hours of sleep. Nope. I'm down with that. Uh, it's about two nights worth for me. Spending time with loved ones and building community. Nah, that ain't going to work. Yeah, that's tough. Well, yeah, that's, Joe, that's you do that one. with Taylor Swift that's tickets. That's right. Yeah, and, I know, build community. You do that. Yeah, yep. Maybe Christmas. That's about it. Uh, walk 3,800 steps each day. That's not That's nothing. Easy. That's nothing. Yeah. Uh, continue to live uh, with a purpose beyond the age of 100. Well, you can't really do that until you hit 100, right? That's right. Just a good PM at that age. Yep. That's, uh, that's the purpose. Any and age, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, Joe, avoid smoking or drinking alcohol. I'll be damned. Yeah. She says uh, you should live with the five L's. Love, laughter, labor, listening, and life. I see. Okay, got yeah, it? That's very Do nice. That. I'm glad she's 102. It's very sweet. 102. We had some deaths yesterday uh, we didn't get to because of my uh, unfortunate disconnection. Yeah. Uh, uh, just uh, briefly, let me mention them. Pat Robertson, of course, we all know who he was. He's a television Scott preacher. Yesterday. He was. Uh, he he apparently uh, had seventy dollars in his pocket in nineteen fifty nine when he bought a bankrupt television station. He was worth a hundred million 
dollars when he dies. His Elmer Gantry. Give me a break. Uh huh. I wasn't going to say that because I'm the news guy, but you said it. Uh, The Iron Sheik, as we heard a little while ago, passed away. He was 81 years old. He had 640,000 Twitter followers. We talked about his Twitter feed. Uh, He was a uh, a very profane but fun guy on Twitter. And George Winston, who did very mellow piano music, died at the age of 74. He was okay. It was very popular, very popular. Uh, Mm -hmm. I I found it somewhat, uh, you know, snoozy, but what are you going to do? very popular sold millions of records so uh and i have my doubts about this story uh but it is on several reputable sites i got this one this version off of business insider a man in china has been fired for spending up to six hours a day in the bathroom oh that's in milking Florida. it well, you can do that's that. milking it the reason that i had uh doubts about the story the employee identified by his surname wang hey no uh, no under, underwent surgery for an anorectal issue in December of 2014, said he experienced pain a month later after the surgical wound healed and had to spend three to six hours a day in the toilet. In particular, Wang visited the toilet 22 times in a 10 day period, that's daily, 22 times. Wang was then terminated from employment with his employer citing provisions in the staff handbook relating to tardiness, leaving work early or unauthorized absences. He sought arbitration to reinstate his position. The two parties began a lengthy lawsuit to resolve everything. The case finally reached the high court, which ruled that Wang's bathroom stints were not within reasonable and normal physiological needs. He did yeah. not get his job back. <clears throat> Ooh. All of this sparked lots of talk, obviously, online. You know Here's that we've media. lost the world's dirtiest man? Hmm. No. Yeah, his name was Amu Haji. He lived in a hole. Uh, oh, uh, I think the village we, of we talked Dejga. about him before. <laughs> we've talked yeah. about him. He feared ago? soap yeah. and water might cause disease. He did not bathe for over 60 years yep. between 1957 and uh and shortly before his death in 2020, kind of killed his dating life. You know? I, uh, he uh, he I, had uh, the bad skin. Yeah. Joe, we did that story when he died. Yeah, we well, just I died. I thought. No, he died in 2022. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, we, oh, we did that story when he died, Joe. His uh, his uh, <laughs> download's a little slow. <laughs> man, let me look here. Is the dirtiest man dead? <clears throat> yeah. He died we, at we, the age of did. 94 in uh, in October of 22. Yeah. Yeah, that that oh, be I last. Thought he just year. died. That's when we did the story. Oh, actually, never John. mind. Can we go back to the uh, <laughs> story John just did about uh, hiding in the bathroom? Yeah. Uh, the, the first thing I learned when I actually got a job out in public is right out of high school. I worked at Fleet Farm up in Fergus Falls, and what I learned is you sit in the can for about fifteen minutes right before you take your lunch break, yep. and that turns into a forty-five minute break, and then you go in there from a five ten more minutes after your lunch break. You've got yourself an hour there. Hour. Yep. Yeah. I never simple. looked at life that way. Uh, and, and of course, you already know this if you're in a union. Um, but for those of you that don't join the unions, <laughs> go ahead. God. Use this. I hope you're getting the emails and not me today. Wow. Uh, I've taken my email address off the website. I, what I does just, the union I just have to do with it? I'm not getting into this. Rookie nope. and Kenny like to go down this road, and I'm not saying crap. I don't. Do, I don't. I have not led my life that way. Uh, that that despicably as you have. Uh, <laughs> you've had jobs that you've loved. Uh, a lot of us uh, have not. Oh yeah. I had a lot of jobs. I've done a lot of things. Mm-hmm. With your My Talk traffic, I'm Kenny Olson. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, that was fantastic. Thanks. Just uh, right up there with most of them. It's Thank you. Right up there with most of them. You know. Why, why did I think the world... Today is Friday. It's the scramble. Mr. Governor, are you aware of our new friends at North American Banking Company? I think that's Mr. Bilski. Yes, it is. Very good, Mr. Mr. Governor. Good, good old St. Paul family. They have six locations. I was just at the Roseville location before I came in today. 50th in France, Hastings, Woodbury, Shoreview, and their brand new spot in Maple Grove. 
Now, here's the deal. Grace was helping me set up my account uh, earlier today before I came in to do Garage Electric. And she was awesome. She was really, really cool. You know what they like? What's that, Rook? They like cash. Ooh, look they at like that. cash. Look at that load of money. It's all ones. They've first opened in 1998, and they made a promise to deliver a better banking experience for their customer, where you know your banker and they know you. And you know what? That's the way they've been doing things for 25 years. They've got me as a customer, and they will treat you and your family well. And you know what? If you're a small business, they're here for you as well. They're locally owned and operated, which means loan decisions are made here in the Twin Cities. They are not shipped out of state. This helps business owners solve problems and expand their business with confidence. You can also visit them online. It's nabankco.com. That's their website. North American Banking Company, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Joe? Only because they come to us all the way from Fernandina, the Villages, Florida, from the Traveling Limans at WorldwideWaftage.com. It was on this day. Joe, today is June 9th. In 1871, a court ordered an injunction against the construction of the Duluth Ship Canal, which Duluth was building in order to divert traffic from Superior, Wisconsin, which had the natural mouth of the harbor. Duluth Mayor J.B. Culver ordered the excavation into high speed, completing the work on June 13th, just before the formal court order is delivered. Duluth's reply to Superior was, you can stop the water if you can, we can't. The aerial lift bridge now crosses the canal. Hmm. See, back then... Uh, they got stuff done. Well, you did stuff. You had to dig a, dig a harbor. And, you know, we don't do that today. No. We, we dream up ways to shovel snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. come on. On this day in 1892, Ira S. Field died at the age of 78. He and his business partner, John Wesley North, co-founded Northfield. Huh. Get it? His name was Field, and the other guy's name was North? North Field. That's right. Because Field North would have been just too weird. On this day in 1894, the steamer Northwest, built in Cleveland for James J. Hill's Northern Steamship Company, arrived in Duluth, completing its maiden voyage. Oh. On this day in 1921, June 9th. the Cottonwood Oil Company, the first oil cooperative in the U.S., was incorporated. Where? Cottonwood. In the, huh? in the Cottonwood area. Got is it. that a county? I believe so. It is a county. That's a C county. Yep. Carlton, Carver, Cass, Chippewa, Chisago, Clay, Clearwater, <laughs> Cook, boy. Control, Car- <laughs> and Crow, Carver, Car- uh, no. Car- Clark, Clark, Charlie, Chisago, uh, Clay, Clearwater, Chieftain. Cook, Cottonwood, and Crow Wing, Cottonwood, and Chevrolet, Chevrolet County. And finally, on this day in 1979, six nine, Governor Al Qui called out the <laughs> National Guard to protect truck drivers who continued to work during a nationwide strike. Huh. I remember that. Okay. What year was that? 1979. Mm. And then after that, the family of Al Quee can relax. No, no, Chris. That was his lieutenant governor. That's it. Who's named right now, I can't remember. Who's lieutenant governor? When Ricey said... uh, Lou Wangberg. Lou Wangberg. Lou Wangberg Wangberg threw out the first pitch in 1979, and uh, Roycey bellows out, the family of Lou Wangberg can relax. He's been found. (laughs) Get it? Because nobody really knew who. Yeah, nobody knew who Lou Wangberg was. May Shunk. Where are you? One very quick. family can relax. (laughs) One very quick ruling before you say goodbye to the GL. I don't want to say goodbye. This comes to us from Matt. I don't want to say goodbye. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail Hail you. you. So does the Taylor Swift thing fall under the three prices rule? The price you could have paid if you bought the tickets right away. <laughs> the price you pay if you buy them now, and the price you will pay if you try to back out of the deal. That is a great question, That's, Matt. Uh, yes, they do. It does apply. Okay. Yeah. But you're good. I'm all set. I'm all set. Uh, it's all, all. You guys, I told Joe this. What I walked in care of. of. I have heard from more people about that topic than anything we have ever discussed. Well, someday I'd like to, uh, if I can get my ticket guy in here, I, I would like to talk about, and Bert, uh, emailer Bert alluded to this, what's going on here? This is not a normal response to a concert. 
Uh, you were telling me that SoCal Stadium. Yeah, SoFi. SoFi. Uh, it's the f- enter the building price is five grand. No, it's. 1500 I believe. Well, this is ridiculous. This ain't the second coming of the Beatles. And she's doing five <laughs> shows at SoFi, which seats 70,000 people. And this is bigger than Springsteen or oh, the yeah. Stones or anything else. I don't get it. There's yeah. a is there kind of a a national the, are all 12-year-olds in the world brainwashed? This is 100% well, you have to be there if you want to be viewed what as cool was on the, social media. What was the demographic of the Beatles fans in the early 60s? I suppose it, they were it was kids. 15. Yeah, you know. and that's what this is. It's kids. Yeah, but she's not nearly as interesting as the Beatles. Well, they there, don't she know doesn't, She doesn't cut any new path in music. She just, what is she? They love her. Is she an alien, maybe? Yes. <laughs> Can't drive a caterpillar. Tried to, she is nine feet tall, isn't she? She's a tall drink of <laughs> yeah. water, yes. And then I said she's wholesome. And emailer Howard said wholesome. She writes songs about everyone she is with and then cuts them up in public when she breaks up with them. Yeah, yeah it pays. By modern standards, she's pretty wholesome. Isn't that something? Did I I read a headline today somewhere? She just bought an island. Well, she's well, a maybe woman she after was part my of, own heart. Maybe she, she was afford to. part of the food fraud program. Yeah, like all those people that bought islands and jets and whatnot. We just had a, someone plead guilty in that. Fairbow couple, Joe. Yeah, his name. Did John, no John wasn't here yesterday, was he? He was. But I he was, was half out. the time. Oh, that's right. Was it Muhammad <laughs> Ali Hussein, fifty three, and Lul? Bashur Ali, 57, pleaded guilty Thursday to a conspiracy to commit wire fraud for their roles in the scam. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, like they all said, uh, they fed far fewer people than they claimed. But none of Walls' people caught that. No. You know, they were writing checks for five million bucks to people who weren't even feeding anybody. And you know me, I, I, I really don't like making assumptions on this show. I was born and raised in Fairville. I don't think they're originally from the city. Ali's company claimed to have served more than 700,000 meals to children in 11 months. Uh, We don't know that. Between July 2020 and 2021 for $2.9 million in federal money. Did you like the part of this particular story? Some idiot that Walls has working for him. Had to look at that and sign off on it. Yep. How did that get by? Are we? It's a show. We're, We're still doing the show, Kenny. If you have to leave to go, you know, shoot a skunk or something, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I got a new scope on my twenty-two yesterday. Good. I do have to cite that in. All right. Yeah, she was shooting a little high. All right. Thank you very <laughs> much, GLers. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com org in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. Pod MN on your smartphone. Podcast library, Buck. Maybe you're into music. Maybe you're into comedy. Maybe you're into garage logic. Maybe you're into shooting skunks. Yeah, shooting skunks. Whatever the hell you're into, check out PodMN on your smartphone. Subscribe to Garage. Striped, striped gophers, guys. Is that what it is? 
Yeah, I've got a plague of striped gophers. We have a whole bunch of brand new striped gopher videos we call on our them YouTube striped? page. Striped? They're striped. They escaped. They escaped. Striped gophers. They're striped. <laughs> striped. They're striped because they escaped from the truck and they just kept <laughs> and coming went on out. tour. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. They came out of the creek. You gotta came keep up it out. From the creek. And, and they escaped. Subscribe. Like those pigs escaped to Garage Logic on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Sign up for the Garage Logic Town Council at garagelogic.com. Learn the details by clicking on the banner.